Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Sam from Lazenby and we stitch for to create a moment of calm for ourselves. So everything is super simple and we use sashiko a lot and just really simple embroidery and hand stitching techniques. So I just wanted to show you very briefly a quilt that I've been working on that I wanted to share and this is the design we're creating. So each of these squares is one of the Irish quilt squares like so. So we've got the um, five embroidered squares. So this is just one piece of fabric that's cut like this and then we draw the lines on to create the grid and then embroider each square that we've drawn on. We've used um, a friction pen so that it's easily erasable. But you can use chalk or you can mark it with stitches, however you like to do it. And then each of the squares becomes a little piece of work that you can create. It's really achievable, you can experiment, you can try new things that you've seen that we've used here. This is Kawandi patchwork, which is almost like an applique. Let me show you close up. So as you can see, we've just really had fun with tiny scraps of fabric and then overlaying them. And with Kawandi, it's slightly different from Borrow, which is the Japanese version of this, where we lay scraps of fabric and then overstitch. Because with Kawandi, you turn the edges down so there's no fraying. And this is far more durable. The Borrow has a much more rustic finish. Once it's been laundered, the edges will come up. So they both have a different look and they're both really lovely to create. Then I've also used a lot of seed stitch. So here I've created a small star in the middle and then seed stitch around the edges. And this is Sashiko Circles which is a really popular design, lots of you love that. And here I've just had fun with laying out um, some straight lines, just experimenting with textures and different thicknesses of thread. And this one is kind of a 1950s inspired overlaid circles and then thicker, broader stitches of sashiko on the edges. So this is what we've done. We've cut squares of fabric that are three, so it's three 10 centimeter sections. So it's 30 by 30 is the finished piece. And then we've also added a seam allowance along the edges, which we're gonna fold under when we stitch the front to the back. And we've allowed two centimeters on each edge for that. And then as each square is finished and completed. We have cut a backing fabric. This is Liberty Emily, I can't remember, Emily something, I can't remember. <laughs> and we've selected a, a print that will look great in any direction. So when we're stitching it together and we want to create uh, the back of the quilt, when you, if you want to use the back of the quilt or look at it, it really won't matter which way around this goes. If it's slightly off kilter, it doesn't matter. Whereas if you've got a design that's really got a lot of formal lines in it, then it's not very forgiving. This is super forgiving. It's a small print and it's really random pattern. So this is a really great one or something similar to this to choose. If you choose dots or lines, Select a, p a pattern that is not um, organised and formal, that's a bit random. And here are some more of the, the fun <laughs> that I've been having. So this one 
I just love buttons and I love mother of pearl. So I'm going to use more of it in the quilt. So when I'm designing each nine square, I make the middle one the one that I put the most um, accent on. So for each of the panels that you see here, you'll see that. And also if you've um, seen my shorts, you will see I used just leaves that I picked up from outside, drew around them and then did sashiko seed stitch on that. And this one is a seashell that I drew around because it's a lovely organic shape. You can create a really a perfect circle like this one and I'll teach you how to do that. And here just playing, this is a diamond. And this one, yeah, this was a really just let's go and let's try. So this is like bubbles with Sashiko Seed Stitch. I think this honestly would look better with three strands of embroidery floss. I've used six here. I think that would look really cool and maybe larger bubbles. So I'm going to try that again. So I'll share that with you later. And then here I've got a larger circle in the middle. I do love the buttons. I think I'm going to use them a lot more. So here we've got a really small one and the larger circle and a different edging on that. And this is like a shadow silhouette. So I've drawn on the design and then with three strands of embroidery floss, I've created the negative space or covered the negative space so that the flowers stand out. This I think is one of my favorites. It's a lovely wave pattern, so I, I just drew my own waves on, but I will include a wave pattern if you need to copy, then I'll, I'll do that for you. And here I've created a square. As you can see, I want to show you my mistake so that you can see it looks fine, even with mistakes. So here, I did two lines along the edge and then I realized when I stitched them together I did it too far to the right so I've lost the edge of stitching but really it looks fine so I'm not worried I love a, a bit of imperfection in the work it really shows it's handmade and this one yep I don't know what this is just an experiment um, I was inspired by a design that I saw so I just thought well, let's try it so if you'd love to join me on this, the idea is that you create these squares and then we create also the squares in between, which the plain pieces of fabric in between. And then you can quilt as much or as little as you want. So you can create a huge double bed size quilt, or you can create a little lap quilt or you can create um, a table runner and just put them in a row together. But the idea with these um, panels is that it's super simple. It's really relaxing. It's not daunting. Sometimes when you think of creating a quilt, it can feel overwhelming. But the idea be behind this is that it's a small project each square. And if you stop here and you just use this as um, a table mat to put your flowers on, it's going to look gorgeous. Or you can create a hundred of them and create a large piece um, that's really personal to you. And I think also colours. You can select, I've, I'm using really muted colours because this is what I love. It really makes me feel calm. But if you've got just a couple of colours that you want to choose to create your piece with, that will work beautifully as well. Or if you want a super bright quilt and you want each square to be different colours, start off and select your colours and then just 
go with the flow, go with whatever your heart tells you as you're stitching. And I think it's going to be an amazing adventure, <laughs> this quilt. It's super relaxing as well um, as we create together. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm going to show you a couple of um, pieces that I've, I'm going to use for inspiration next. So I went to Lime Regis and this is a piece of tiny pebble that I got. Actually, it was in Charmouth, which is just next to Lime Regis. These grey pebbles and along the beach the pebbles all seem to have these lines through them so I'm going to use this as inspiration to create some of the squares and also these random placed tiny ammonites that are in the, the pebbles and also this one this is um, it's like a coral I think that's been fossilized and as you can see, it almost looks like raindrops on the pebble. So I'm going to try and create something around this as well. And also, one of my favourite things, it's probably going to sprinkle tiny pollen seeds now, let me show you, is this flower. So sorry if it sprinkles all over. But this is a lovely cow parsley that I picked from the hedges. It's at this time of year, it's just everywhere and it's so gorgeous. So I'm going to include this in one of the designs. I'm not sure how, but we'll work it out together. So I would love for you to be on this journey as well, whether you create one or you create a hundred. Each month I'm going to put new designs on the Teachable subscription site. So if you want inspiration, you can take it from there. I, I'll, I'm going to create small patterns so you can cut out the 10 centimeter squares and lay it over and then draw the design onto your panel. Or you can just go free spirited and just go with the flow, get inspiration from online. I'm sure you've seen beautiful designs um, that people have created and you can just create a little panel maybe with a stick and stitch um, patch that you've got or something that you're inspired by you can make it personal and add um, some words let me show you one that I'm going to do as well this I've actually framed but I think I'm going to create something like this onto the panel so write little messages in the squares as well and then I, I will edge that with an embroidery design either a, um, a square of seed stitch or perhaps the running uh, sashiko stitch but as you can see this is embroidered with sashiko can, I don't know if you can see it's too much reflection but you can write words that means something to you and then the quilt will become so personal and so gorgeous it will you know when you cuddle under it and you've you spent all that time and love creating it it's going to be an heirloom and others can share and cuddle under it and love it <laughs> so i hope you're inspired too and I'm going to be sharing more of this and really look forward to sharing it with you. Much love.